हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज आई टॉक टू यू अबाउट वेरियस मेजर डिटर्मिनेंट्स विच इन्फ्लुएंस योर प्लानिंग ऑफ सर्जरी फॉर अ केस ऑफ पेल्विक फ्रैक्चर यूथल इंजरी इन दिस पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द सीरीज ऑफ टॉक्स ऑन दिस आई नाउ वॉन्ट टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट द सेकेंड क्रूशियल डिसीजन विच ऑपरेशन टू परफॉर्म एंड यू हैव वेराइटी ऑफ ऑप्शन फॉर यू the commonest operation that you do is a transperineal anastomotic urethroplasty with or without crural separation this is done in most patients but if you have some difficulty you move towards transperineal urethroplasty with what is called as inferior pubectomy or also known as partial pubectomy if you have more difficulty you can move towards what's called abdominal perineal right incision through the abdomen incision through the perineum abdominal perineal total pubectomy with anastomotic urethroplasty and you if you still have more difficulty where you have pus cavities and fistula and sinuses then in addition to abdominal perineal pubectomy and urethroplasty you also need in some patients or mental interposition rare but you need so you have a progressively increasing difficulty level of the operation depending upon what is happening in your patient this is called a simple urethroplasty technique while all these three are called elaborate urethroplasty technique in our current classification of urethroplasties for pelvic fracture urethral injuries how do you decide this now is there a way in clinical practice whereby looking at the x ray pictures rgu and mcu of the patient can you decide to certain degree what will you need and that is the main focus of this talk assessment of urinary injury the urethral injury first you have to know about the site of urethral injury this means what is the upper end of defect is it below the verum antennum which is there in most patients in some patient is above the verum antennum you can know this by looking at the picture of mcu about the lower end of defect which means the bulb urethra how much of the bulb is damaged how much the bulb has gone in the trauma process so this is by what i mean by sight knowing about both ends upper end as well as lower end then the length of the defect you have to measure the distance between the two ends and if there is a scale given on the film that you can know immediately by by dicom images but if there are no scales given you can superimpose the picture of rgu or mcu and i'll tell you the way to do it or in past we have done what was called bujiogram one buji from above one buji from below and take a plain film and then we knew what are the difference between the two ends we no more do it we do on superimposition technique nowadays and third point is is there a complexity in the case which means is there a concurrent bladder injury is there a urethro or vesico rectal fistula or is there a reflux into the kidneys in this patient so you have these complexities they make the management of the patient very very difficult and tricky so when it comes to assessment of urethral injury you can do whole this lot just by looking at rgu mcu films so you have now three images one plain x ray film of the pelvis retrograde urethrogram film and a micturetic cystogram or voiding cystogram in the center of this evaluation you have first local examination and i told you to look at the site of entry of spc examine the state of health of penis examine the position of meatus is hypospadiac or normal it's very important condition of testes and epididymis is there a fistula and sinus so rectal examination to see anal tone and the prostate location so so many things you can know by a good thorough meticulous clinical examination all these points have bearing on your management so the first i'll tell you 
that you please be very good in your local examination, very thorough in your local examination. And then I call this as first point. The next point will be look at the fractures and displacements on the plane film. On the plane film, look at the presence of stones in the bladder. In the plane film, look for those areas of fracture which can give rise to neuro or vascular adverse consequences. I told you fracture in the area of Elkhoff canal or fracture in the area of the sacrum, fracture in the area of the trochanter. So in a plain film, please see second, third, fourth point. When you start seeing RGO film, look at the site of the distraction, defect or stricture as you may loosely call it or degree of the bulbar loss and is there a false passage? False passage because at various places people attend buginage in these patients and uh, they harm the patient more by creating a false passage. I have had some patients in my career who gave me a uh, lot of problem because false passages were there. So this is an important point to see and uh, then in the MCO film you see the status of the bladder neck. You also see length and caliber of prostatic urethra. I told you about this in my previous lecture. And then is there a reflux? So these 10 points we will see one by one in this a cyclical manner. And if you start seeing these 10 points in each and every case, you develop this reflex of noting all these points and you will not miss anything point which is important. So let us see this, this grid of 10 points with the help of illustrated cases and I presume that you will do always a very good clinical examination. I want you to move to the extra films. This is case one. Look at this plain film. This plain film shows you what and I told you to examine from center to periphery manner and in that way, in that way you will notice a healed fracture here, displaced bony fragment here and you will also see rami are intact, these are intact, these are all fine and look at this here, there is some fracture in callus formation in the area of the trochanter. So this is the plain film, there are no stones in this patient. When you look at MCU film, this is the bladder picture, no reflux, bladder neck is wide or right, prostatic youth has good caliber, it has a, a moderate degree of length and obviously it is looking like below the value montana. When you see a retrograde film like that, it is showing you good bulb and only small part of the bulb is involved in the structure process. And now I said you superimpose RGU film over the MCU film and then you get this kind of an impression. Now this is not very accurate, but this is an approximate way of knowing what is the distance. And how can you know distance? This breadth of the bone here of ischial rami is 2 cm. You can compare the distance of this distraction defect by knowing this, the breadth of the bone. This is 2 cm and so approximately this is also 2 cm. So now, do you know enough about this patient and are you capable to plan this operation on the basis of these radiological findings? For bony injury, there is a femoral fracture. So there will be a, some degree of positioning problem. So you must do a squat test and a gait test and see before you book the patient for surgery. For urinary injury, the urethral injury, length of the distraction defect is less than 2 cm and complexity is none. There is no reflux, right? And things like that. So, how do you manage this patient? Which kind of operation you perform for this patient? You will perform a perineal urethroplasty, simple kind of anastomotic urethroplasty, end to end anastomosis, and you will be fine in this patient. Another patient, another patient, and 
look at this cubic diastasis and of course there is some problem here in the sacrum sacralic joint because of the open book kind of injury there is no fracture of the rami here and there nothing wrong with the hip joint or femur right so in a peripheral way nothing abnormal there are no stones when you do a retrograde picture you notice this kind of a contrast going in a small space and then entering the barrel and when you do an mcu of this patient this patient is voiding with a very good history but this patient had some degree of incontinence and this was after about 3 months of injury he was able to void he had minor degree of incontinence what do you do in this patient what is the radiological finding and on that basis what is the plan bony injury there is diastasis urinary injury no destruction defect at all there is some opening of the bladder neck small cavity in the prostatic urethra so some incontinence is there and then there is no complexity so obviously this patient does not need any kind of urethroplasty you can ask him to wait and watch and see what happens to his incontinence often these patients improve by waiting for some time but you don't need a urethroplasty in this patient because he is able to void case 3 again a plain film what all do you see you will see some callus formation here and you see a fractured ischial bone and you see fractured piece lying here and here which is displaced in the area of your incision and there is either fracture here which is lined which has healed nicely no stones no problem with the femoral head or femoral neck or trochanters both innominate bones are fine this is a retrograde urethrogram film of the patient you will appreciate that only half the bulb is visible then most of it is structured this is a maturing film of the patient you notice that there is a reflux on right side and this happens because of spc i hope you are able to see a spc tract spc catheter coming up to the the bladder neck and the tip of the catheter in this patient touches the trigone touches the area of the urethral orifice because there is some edema there and the compliance of the orifice uh, the function of the orifice is not appropriate that's why this patient develop reflux and as the patient is voiding you will see some reflux in the prostatic ducts so he has reflux problem in both the areas and when you superimpose this mcu and rgu that is the distance of the defect that you have so making a summary of the radiological finding and then deciding what to do a bony injury which shows callus at pubic symphysis a fractured piece of bone from left ischial ramus medially displaced it may limit the perineal exposure you should be ready mentally to excise this callus to go to a point in sometimes a urinary injury the loss of proximal bulb and the less or the destruction defect is more than 2 cm you will therefore need a longer mobilization of the urethra and the patient has grade 3 for reflux on the right side and he has intraprostatic reflux also because of these two things the patient has a greater chance of developing a right sided pyelonephritis or even a prostatitis in the post operative period so be careful about this patient so what does he need which operation does he need look at the length of the defect look at this issue here he needs probably he will need a some kind of inferior pubectomy so that you can bridge the defect which is longer than 2 cm case 4 here is a patient a pain film where you see a butterfly kind of fracture all four rami are fractured this rami fracture is close to a cox canal but this side it is not so so you have to be careful about the vascularity of the penis in this patient so take history of erections in the early morning natural erection in the patient if they are present this means he has good penile blood flow 
or if there is some doubt please do intracavernosal papaverine injection test to know the penile vascularity preoperatively. This is the retrograde uterine lamp film. A good bulb is present, only small amount of bulb is lost. And this is the MCU of the film. You can see it's sufficiently long to study ulcer. And you do also see some reflux here. And this is the superimposition of RGU and MCU picture, and distance is very small. Now, here you may be tempted to say that this is a very easy case for urethroplasty, and you do it in one and a half hour time and astomose nicely, and it will be all fine. But please remember, this patient had a compromised blood flow in his pudendal artery on one side, and you do not know about the other side. So this compromised blood flow in the pudendal circulation can give rise to a poor blood flow on this end, and even though you do technically nice anastomosis, the result can still be bad. So you can tell this, prognosticate the outcome before you actually do the operation. So in this patient, bone injury, summary again, butterfly fracture may limit the perineal exposure. The urinary injury, bulb is okay, length of distraction less than 2 cm, and the intraprostatic reflux, higher chance of postoperative prostatitis. And then in this patient also, uh, you may or you may not need inferior pubectomy. Case 5. Look at this pain film. And here again, I want you to examine this film from the center to the periphery, to the periphery, to the periphery. I, the, I told you the scheme in my previous talk. So this patient has one fracture here, one fracture here, one heat fracture here. And apart from that, he has a problem in his sacroiliac joint. And he has a whole lot of problem with the escabulum, this kind of callus formation, a trochantic injury, and he also has a fracture here. So this patient has so many areas of injury, right? So it is important for you to focus on this fracture, which is in the area of the Alcox canal. This is retrograde luthogram film of this patient, a small bulb is seen nicely, small area of the compromise of the bulb and this is a maturating film. Right? You see adequate bladder neck, sufficiently long prostatic urethra and this is the a superimposition film. You will notice that the distance between these two is very very small. Again, it will look to you a very small, a very simple surgical case. But when you plan surgery for him, on the basis of bone injury, callus at the proximal ischial factor site probably will involve Alcox canal. So you have to check his penile blood flow by the papaverine test. He has left femoral head and estabular and eyelid bone fractures. He can have positioning problems. And because position is not good on the operation table, your exposure can be difficult. So you have these two difficulties which you can know immediately by looking at the plain film. Urinary injury wise, the bulb is okay, length is also less and there is no complexity. So probably you will not need pubectomy and you will be able to do surgery wise, anastomosis, mobilization etc. will not be difficult. So I hope with the help of these five illustrated cases, I have been able to impress upon you how on the basis of plain film, RGU and MCU, you can make a plan of surgery in these patients. So thank you very much for your patient listening. In case you have any comments and questions, please write on my email.